Caddis Maximus here, this time with a review of a couple Rockwell drills. These are the spade handle drills from, I guess, the 80s and 90s. They're also labeled as Porter Cable. Same drills, slightly different model numbers. We have two of them. We have a 7564, and we have a, what is this, a 4275. These are ha hailing out of <laughs> Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So these are spade handle drills. They're called spades because it's kind of like a spade shovel. And then they do take a pipe handle. These, this body design had been around at least from the late 60s or sometime in the 70s. They were all metal and actually a little bit less powerful. And the, uh, in, I guess in the later 80s or 90s, they came out with plastic body ones. They do have a metal reinforcing ring, but it's still plastic. Although you don't really remove or install the side handle a whole bunch. It just uses the standard three quarter inch thread. Uh, pipe handle got a pretty good deal on both these really good deal at a garage sale this was actually this drill had the remnants of a chuck on it and the guy said he just couldn't get it off and actually there's a technique it depends on if it's really rusted then sometimes you actually have to grind the whole dang thing off on this one it was he had managed to get the whole collar and it was just this stub of a chuck left on this drill I did put on a nice Jacobs chuck and we'll talk about mounting in a second but the trick was is pull off the gearbox because the back of the spindle sticks out a little bit you can only hit these so hard otherwise you start really risking the gears but when you pull it out you have the back of the spindle and I just put that against a pretty hard piece of plastic over to protect the end of it and actually hammered not super hard but pretty hard right on the end of the chuck just trying to or this chuck body just trying to get it to shift a little bit there's a microscopic now amount to upset the threads and then this hitting it not super bad but right in this little channel here with the chisel hammer and chisel and was able to eventually get it off so he gave me a great deal basically included this drill with the <laughs> truck core on it that he couldn't remove as well as the heavier duty version so there are multiple versions of these drills and certain different RPMs. For example, this one's 600 RPM. This one's 500 RPM. They also had D-handle, which are like reciprocating saws or like rotary hammers, oftentimes where you have a handle right in the back of the tool, kind of shaped like the letter D. Exact same body. It just has this whole assembly is replaced with a D-handle, and it doesn't have this lower handle. That's also why you can see that they have these provisions on the gearbox like they were threaded for a side handle. That side handle does exist on the D-handle versions, but on these with the pipe handle and the long drive handle, they don't. Just like the Milwaukee Whole Hogs and that old school Porter cable I just reviewed, pretty standard switch setup. You'll recognize this reverse switch here. This is still not linear. It's a rocker. That old Porter cable was metal. This is the same switch, just a plastic version, and then they went to linear, but you can pretty much replace them with all, with each other, I should say. Give these a quick run. I don't even know which one is which right now. I think that's this one. This is a lot more powerful. This is 8 amps at 500 RPM. And the other one here, if I can figure out where my... They're both heavy duty drills. This one is just a, just a little bit more general purpose. This is 6 amps. And we can see that here. This is 6 amps at... Well, maybe you can't see that. Let's get a little more... Come on, camera. 6 amps at 600 RPM. And you can hear the motor just isn't as high pitched as the one that's 8 amps. And then it's also geared down more. So this one's been used a bit more. Actually, if we look at the side of this one, we can see that this one is 8 amps. And you can barely see, but if you just look, you can see that's the corner of a 5. So these are 
and look around online. These are 500 RPM. Also, it's triple gear reduction. So if we turn the clock, chuck clockwise, if I can just get there, now you can see the fan. So I turn the chuck this way and the fan moves the opposite direction. On a half inch drill, you know that's a triple reduction. So there's two sets of little gears in there just to offset the help with the further reduction and offset the load to just a bit wider of a surface area. This one, as you can see, the motor moves in the same direction as the chuck, double reduction. So that's gearing basically maps to the power of the drills. More powerful six or seven amp drills would be in the 450 RPM range. That Porter cable is six amps that I reviewed just a couple days ago. Six amps at 550 RPM. This is six amps at 600. Just a general purpose half inch drill for, you could probably run a two and seven six or nine sixteen self feed bits with it, but it'd be generally just for hole saws and larger augers. Where this is really more tuned for mixing or for running like really large, like two and a half inch or larger self-feed bits, that type of stuff. Interestingly enough, there must be kind of a soft area in the gearbox because I was noticing on this one, I mean, it's not cracked, but the gearbox is definitely dented. And I was noticing on this one, same thing, we got some denting. So the gearbox just must be a slightly thinner on this side than it is on the other side which i find a little bit interesting anyway these are you know some pretty famous drills i actually wasn't aware that there was a i've had a porter cable like this same thing 800 8 amps at 500 rpm but i never knew that they made just a slightly lighter duty version but they're all both of these are all ball and needle bearing i guess we'll take a quick look at the brushes since I haven't really these I'll redo the power cords off camera but let me pull off the backs of these these do have spade handles that can actually be rotated in any of four positions which is kind of neat these are the kind of handles that are always end up missing but fortunately they're both here on these drills so I was at least happy about that this one appears to also have a washer with it they just use a little brass insert Somebody's been in this one before I was noticing these screws are way far out. <laughs> they just weren't screwed all the way in. I'll get the back cover off the other one in a second here. I can see why they... These are actually really nice screws. These are known as plastite. As you can see, they have two thread pitches. One standard and one that is just extra deep. Really gets good traction on the plastic, offsets the load to a wider area. But these screws, of course, have a deep track and a shallow track. And if you pull them out and then you screw them back in and you get, there'll be two positions. Like if you back them out, they'll click once and then they'll click again. One will be for the original threading and one will be basically 180 degrees out. If you get them in the wrong position, then it's essentially trying to run the deep thread in the already existing narrow groove and it ends up, the screws end up being really stiff and difficult. And that might explain why. Take a quick look at the backs of these. Brushes are the same. There we go. Brushes are the same on both of them. What's interesting is they have these, they're actually pretty decent brass brush holders with this like kind of over thing clamp, I guess. Double screwed and that's where the conductor comes in and it's just held with one of the screws pretty compact not too bad to change the brushes because you just pull off the cap and pull out those couple of screws and it allows them to have a pretty long brush and a pretty compact space this commutator uh this drill was used intermittently it's you know it's the 1980s or newer and that's when they really stopped wrapping jute around the backs of the motors and started using folded contacts and some manufacturers still use it welded but many just use these folded and this this became the standard so when they realized they didn't have to spend money on ultra thick coatings of epoxy and wrapping everything with jute uh, because it just wasn't necessary easiest way of putting it anyway it's going to be the same deal this one actually surprisingly enough looks like it has a little bit more wear 
otherwise the very same motor although for some reason the wire in this one is like really red of course if you're observant you'll be noticing if I can get them both in frame there's a distinct difference between these two chucks and on this is just a standard half inch 20 thread spindle with a half inch chuck on it on and which is one I guess I guess it's okay because that's the standard but it's a little bit disappointing because many manufacturers Milwaukee's DeWalt uh, use even like Milwaukee whole hogs that type of stuff use 5 8 spindles with half inch chucks on these big spade handle uh, heavy duty drills just because you tend to be using like mixing paddles long augers things that have a lot put a lot of stress on the spindle and the 5 8 spindle is just less likely to get bent or broken and so Rockwell really should have gone with 5 8 but that half inch is the standard and it's just fine and on a side note, these since this is a threaded spindle, this old chuck had a lock screw, but the whoever tried getting it off, you can see that is a huge hole. He drilled out the lock screw, but used way too big of a drill bit, and actually drilled out some of the threads of the spindle, so you couldn't put a lock screw back in this. I just put a little Loctite blue on this chuck, and used the impact to put it on, because quite frankly, this is a... American made industrial Jacobs chuck and it'll be the last chuck that this drill ever probably ever has on it but they did have an answer so instead of going with a threaded spindle here this is known as a key drive so this is going to be like on a number two or a number three Jacobs chuck taper there is a lock screw but it isn't to prevent it from unthreading it just holds it onto the taper and prevent it from popping off of course removing these is difficult because you have to get a set of wedges that go right in that space to pop the chuck off once you remove the screw but it's on a taper so it's extremely concentric it can't shift a little bit one side or the other when you're threading it on that's one of the disadvantages to a threaded chuck is that uh, there has to be a, a clearance for the, the object to be able to actually pass over the threads to screw on and that gives an opportunity for it to shift one side to the other Tapered spindles, of course, are tapered, so it's totally concentric. And then what this has is just a dog. It just has a f this is just a round with two flats. And then there's this part on the back of the chuck which fits over that. So it is a heavy-duty positive engagement. You don't have the stress riser or the threads. And then the taper tends to be a little bit bigger, or probably around about five eighths. So that's what they did in this case was just put on what's known as a key drive taper mount chuck on this 500. RPM 8 amp unit which is the heavier duty unit and so certainly do approve of that so more than likely the 6 amp 600 RPM one they just said that was all that it needed was a half inch chuck and on the torqueier one they went ahead and used a better uh, mounting system this one is still kind of it's not super beat up but it's pretty well used definitely has some character to it but it goes to show a lot of these drills will end up just running intermittently a little bit of mixing here running a big hole here and there you may use it throughout the day but it may only actually end up with 20 or 30 minutes of cumulative runtime you know if it takes you 30 seconds to drill a hole then you can drill 60 holes in half an hour so many times it's the outside of these drills that ends up getting a lot more beat up rather than the uh internals these also have kind of an interesting thing that they're doing because this is single reduction this is double reduction is rather than this having just different gears such as well i'll show you let me take these off sorry for my weird lighting i'm trying to figure out a good way anyway you can see there's our two idler gears and of course those the higher ones what connects to the spindle but what they've done is they have a multiple sets of holes. So because of the spacing, what's interesting is when it's a triple reduction, they're going to use these hole, two holes on the this side. I guess that would actually be the driver side or the left-hand side. But when it's a single reduction, they don't use those two holes. They put the gear over here. So these gearboxes are absolutely identical. It just depends on 
where they're placing bearings. Of course, these are, well, you can probably see better on this one, but they're all just like that. They're all needle bearings. They're not a bunch of needles. They are caged, but that's just fine. They have these red things in here. So what this is, is because of the direction that this motor turns, in this case, the motor turns uh, clockwise to dr drive the chuck clockwise. But we can see, interestingly, that the motor here, see the gear teeth twist the opposite direction. Than they do on this motor, which actually surprised me. I wouldn't think that they would have actually ground two different motors, but those are actually two different armatures in these drills. What they're doing is since the first stage is helical cut and then the rest of the stage is a straight cut, they use, they do that because uh, it's cheaper to do straight cut gears and really um, the advantage of helical cut, they are really is lower noise. So at the highest speed portion where or the motor, the first reduction is, they'll do helical to reduce gear noise and then after that, since they're moving slowly, more slowly, it'll just be straight cut gears. But because of the direction that they're going, it's corkscrewing. Like if you were to put your finger in the gear teeth, it would draw it towards the back of the drill. So what can end up happening is any grease that's in these gears, surprisingly enough, and I certainly know my lesson from overpacking grease and just having it come flying out of the fan, is when you have this situation, those have little grease slingers. It's just a little washer, specially cut, has little fingers that sit right down into the gear teeth. So any grease that gets caught in there and gets driven towards the back of the motor instead of going through the bearing and flinging out of the gearbox, it hits that and then spins it out. And they actually are called grease slingers. One thing I'm noticing about this one on the left it almost seems like there's some moisture that got in there. It's a bit red, almost like a little bit of uh, rust, but maybe that's just the grease that's in there. Other than that, not a lot else to say. I will grease myself up. I'll pull out these two final drives here, make sure I don't lose my little washers. But we can see that, you know, here's that second stage coming in here, and then they, or I, yeah, second stage, third stage. Yeah, this is the second stage. This would be the third stage. But you can see they make the gears much wider, much uh, more engagement area, and the teeth thicker as it progressively gets more and more uh, leverage because of the increasing gear ratio. And I've run into, actually surprisingly, even some newer drills where they just use the same thickness gear teeth. And what ends up usually happening is it's either the motor or the uh, final stage just ends up having a whole lot more pressure on it and ends up just grinding the gear teeth away. They end up stripping out uh, just because they didn't properly size them for the amount of torque levels each reduction stage has. And these are proper Rockwells. What we do see is a little pin there. Since this is machined circularly, what that does is when you put service these and you put the gear case back on the gear case can't shift one way or the other relative to the diaphragm that you can't see relative to this diaphragm see if this shifts then you can see that these gears would either tilt one way or they tilt the other and that's extremely bad gears the lifespan of gears is a function of their besides loading everything else being equal would be precision of grinding you know, quality materials and how precise they're held in alignment. Because if you have gear teeth that are meshing evenly, then the pressure is evenly across the whole surface, very low wear. But when you start having them getting offset, then what you get is, um, don't eat the grease, Tiny, is now you have a whole high concentration of pressure in one spot, wears that out quickly, and this, that high concentrated, high pressure area just walks its way and can destroy gears just super fast. And I run in the Makitas that didn't have that. And you drill a hole and the gearbox would sound different because it had shifted. So being Rockwell proper drills, they do have pins. So when you put the gear cases back together, 
there and then in the exact same alignment as when you took them apart. And there you have it. This is a, I always forget the part numbers on these 7564 and 4275, just totally unrelated part numbers for what is pretty slightly different drills. Just thought it was interesting that you can get a black with a blue label or a gray and black with a black label. Later on, this is a bit earlier, later on you'll see these like on some on eBay will say EHD, which is extra heavy duty, is what they started calling these drills. So I guess this is the heavy duty and this is the extra heavy duty. Bottom line is they're both heavy duty drills, but this one's power and speed, 6 amps by 600 RPM, is balanced for general half inch drill tasks. And the 8 amps by 500 is just for uh, extra when you're mixing concrete or uh, big batches of drywall mud, other stuff that requires just a lot of uh, just a, a lot of extra torque, or something like this would be able to get away with it. It just is really hard in the gears, so you had the triple reduction, better chuck, and it, that's exactly what this is. This is just made for just much, not much, but significantly more serious work. I mean, the motor on this thing is. 33% more powerful than this, plus 12% gear reduction. I don't know how that really pans out, but it's somewhere around 40 to 50% more torque out of this drill than you do out of this one. It's just as these really like 500 RPM and stuff is really slow. If you're actually like using a half inch drill bit or something, that and, the, and drilling through steel, you'd be going around 700 RPM. So this would be much better optimized for actually drilling a half inch hole with the twist drill in the steel than something like this which is where larger hole saws and that type of stuff but at least you're familiar with it and these rockwells and of course their porter cable brothers came in d-handle versions and various power levels and rpm you know if you're somebody who's hunting to build up the collection you want the the big dog and you have to make sure it's pretty easy in photos even if they don't show you the key drive because you can see this really big gap You'll know it's a threaded chuck if it just looks more normal like this one. Anyway, some cool classic Rockwell uh, drills, and I think anybody who ends up with one of these will be more than happy with the kind of performance that you and longevity you get out of them. Probably would, eh, I think they're just, I mean, obviously, they're just as good as the Milwaukee 1660, and they sometimes call them their compact spade handle drills, and the DeWalt versions, and the Makita's BR, or the 60, Makita 6013 BRs. It's just kind of cool because half-inch drills, I mean, for 3 8 and stuff, it's not as common to actually get heavy-duty drills, but when it comes to the half-inch drills, people were buying them to run bigger bits and do harder work. And so they were, had a bit more incentive to say, you know, I'll pony up a few extra bucks and get the heavy, you know, more professional heavy duty version of a half inch drill because I'm going to be using it for tough tasks and I just don't want to use a cheap one that's just going to, you know, not be adequate or is going to end up burning up on me or I'm going to end up, you know, ruining its gears from working it too hard. So that's one of the reasons I'm able to find uh, so many heavy duty half inch drills is just because the nature of a half inch drill is heavy duty work and people tend to recognize that they're not people generally actually are not idiots uh, of course i'm the exception but they'll say you know if i'm going to do tough work with a drill i actually want a somewhat of a tough drill so it's always cool running into these and there has been just like hand tools surprisingly enough there's a big variety of power tools like half heavy duty half inch drills i'm sure that there's over the last century, there's probably been 100, 200 manufacturers of this level of drill. And it's just kind of neat to run into two Rockwells like this. Anyway, see you next time.